Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for mo it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the newer version of Roland Zenbeats version 3.x. A Zenbeats had a fantastic set of updates so it makes sense to actually go through what has changed and I will create a number of tutorials as I usually do. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so in this first video, we are going to give an introduction to the newer version of Zenbit, and I'm going to give you a little bit of work around so that you can refamiliarize re yourself really with the user interface. As you can see, when you load it, the screen is quite different. You have selection, for example, to go directly into the ZR1 drum sampler, which is new, or the ZC1 synthesizer, which we already know from previous version of uh, uh, Zenbit. You can create a, um, a project with an instrument track. You can go into record audio. So you have a number of templates which you can use, which is really nice. Up here, you have the cogs to access your settings, which, of course, you can also do Go on from the hamburger menu here and click on settings there, okay? And this is the usual settings, as you probably are aware, where you can change settings for your interface. General in terms of device name, song defaults, auto save, which is interesting. But also setting for uh, your audio, including buffer sides, for example, which comes really handy. Or your MIDI input, for example, which includes also Bluetooth. This is where you set up your Bluetooth MIDI devices. Of course, setting for your MIDI outputs and also for your plugins. I'm running Zenbits at the moment inside the NiPad uh, Pro M1 chip. The hamburger menu has uh, all the other menus which you are uh, used to, to open songs, store, go directly to the store, help language sign out from Zenbits in terms of your account and exit Zenbits, of course. So let's click on ZC1 synthesizer. Okay, as you can see, the um, project has been created and it, con and it contains a ZC1 track and instrument added. So let's close some of the windows and let's go through the interface again. So we click here on the exit, on the X here, so we close that keyboard. You can reopen it here where there is this symbol on the left hand side, click on it and you can reopen it again of course, and then let's close also the view of ZC1 synth, click on the X there. And hopefully this will look more familiar now in terms of previous version of Roland Zenbits, okay? So we are inside the loop builder, we have one track, the ZC1 synth track, okay? We can access also the main track from there, and you can also go inside, for example, the timeline view. As you can see, you click here and you can clearly see now the ZC1 track and also the main track. And then you click back on here to go back to the loop builder and you can see the main track has also appeared. Click here on the arrow and you can see you can expand the settings of the main track. And you can see also a percentage as well here in terms of CPU utilization, which is really, really nice. So down here you have uh, your usual scenes in terms of moving from one set of patterns to the next one as well. You can click on play to play all the pattern corresponding um, here, okay, vertically, as it was before with Zenbit. You can click on the menu here to lock the part, add the part, rename, um, change the color, have a part follow so that you move to the next one as I previously explained in other tutorial. I duplicate that particular part. I prefer to call it the same, but you can duplicate that part if you like and um, cut, copy and delete. Okay, and then of course you can scroll here horizontally to see the others as well. You have zoom in and out button here, plus and minus as well. At the top here, you still have access to the hamburger menu. Okay, like so. Then you have access to transport control. You can stop the play, you can start to play like so, and of course pause it, stop again, you can record like so, and it will. you have a countdown, and it will start to record whatever has been armed for recording, like in this case that one. And hopefully you can hear that when you start recording, you have also the tick for the metronome, which is active here. Here you can set it to part follow, again as it was before in previous version of Zenbit, here you have your bits per minute, 
which is where you can select it here. You can also tap it as well. You can change the same time signature here. You can go up and down in terms of BPM. And then you can have your able to link enable your start and stop tra transport control enable. And also you can add the latency compensation in milliseconds as well. Here you activate the metronome. Okay, you can say on play off on record on pre-roll on and you can set the volume as well, which is nice. Here is where you can set the um, settings for the grid. Okay, you can say follow the mini timeline when it's being played on or off. You can activate some swings. Okay, and you can have a um, preset in terms of length of notes and also set the strength as well. Let's disable that at the moment. And then here we can set the um, strength, if you like, of quantizing when you record in terms of notes length. You can have set it for your launch bit in terms of bars and also the new button size, which is really nice if you want to change that. Okay, and then we have additional settings, the key lock here, which you can say, okay, I'm going to have C and can set the mode as well. You have different modes, which is really nice. And then here you have a setting for MIDI learn and MIDI input settings, undo, redo, and then option here to save the song. Okay, so hopefully straightforward. You can see the track here. As I said, you can expand here the controls, click on the right arrow, and then it becomes a, a left arrow to close it as well. And here you have control for solo, muting, freezing the track, additional setting, arm for recording, and then you have also your meter here as well. You can play directly um, the particular uh, loop, and you can also go into additional settings where you can lock it, rename it, show the pattern browser, cut, copy, export, and modify, and delete it. And of course, you can have also additional settings here on the track. You can rename, duplicate, cut, and copy, lock the patterns, freeze the tracker, which is good if you want to uh, save resources. You can change the instrument. You can change the, tr the track icon, save the track template, and delete it, of course. Okay. So that's a little bit of how it works. You can click on the plus sign here and you have templates of additional tracks you can add. So drum track, instrument track, audio track, send track uh, for your send effect, group track as well, which is really nice, track template and part as well. Down here you have a different selection, okay, which I'll show you in the moment. Uh, if you, and at the bottom here, you have the access to the mixer. So you click on the mixer, there you go. And then you can move it up and down as well. Okay, and then you can also go full screen as well and go back to the previous screen. You can close it as well. Now, if we go back to the mixer, when you are on the mixer, you have additional option here for MIDI in, out, advanced MIDI, audio output, send routine, force mono, invert phase. So lots of different options. You can set the, vo the level, the pan, Still additional settings as well, which you can access for the track. Still solo, mono, uh, mono the track, record it as well. Okay. And um, at this point, if I click on the button here, it will show you um, the level, the view that you have at the moment. And remember here, you can also act on filtering as well. Okay. Um, and then if I click on here, it will show you the effects. And this is where you can add effects. If I click on the next one, it will show you the send icons where you can click a send to um, another uh, plugin. And as you can see, the windows here, the browsing window has changed. You have a lot of different icons, which is really, really nice. So it's much, much nicer than what it was before. Okay, so you can see how useful the buttons are in this case. Okay, and um, really, really nice. However, when you are inside a normal track like this, if you don't have a lot of audio effects, when you click on the first button, like so, you open and close this view. Okay. But if you click on the next one, it looks like nothing is changing. In reality, it moves to this to the view of uh, seeing the audio effects. But in this case, there is only one. And the same for the send effects. But in this case, you can see everything in one screen, so you don't see any differences. Okay. If you click on that, it's not active at the moment. Okay. Uh, let's go to the um, timeline view, okay? And um, let me close this. As you can see, uh, you have a timeline view. You can change uh, from uh, bar and bit to minutes and second. You can set snapping on and off, which is relevant to the grid settings. And then you have uh, your traditional more views where you can do 
draw duplicating times two etc etc so a lot of settings and again you can still access uh, additional settings for that particular loop but that's your timeline view and here as well you can also set the loop okay and then you can go into start length etc which i will show you in uh, one of the next tutorial so let's go back to the uh, loop um, builder view okay so let me show you a little bit more how these controls uh, work so let's say for example we double click on zc1 we go to the default preset look how nice they are in terms of icons let's click on dance shows too okay let's bring up the keyboard as well here let's close this uh, window <laughs> And here you have the usual view with some differences on the keyboard. For example, you have uh, uh, the visibility of the modulation wheel and the pitch band, hold button or not to hold notes. And then of course you can move here up and down on the keyboard. You can also move with the arrow left and right. You can change the size of the keyboard. The moment is auto size. You can go on custom size, one octave, two octave, etc., etc., as you like. And then here you can change the views. Okay, instead of the normal keyboard, and then you have additional settings. For example, you can show all notes name, really nice. You can show also, you can activate pitch, bend and drag, which means once you, you hold and drag, you will have the pitch bend moving. And if you go back to the setting, you can also set the speed from slow waist to faster. Okay, at the moment, I don't want that, so I deactivate that and I de deactivate showing the notes as well. So as you can see, really, really nice and uh, straightforward. Okay, now that we have that one, um, in terms of keyboard available and we explained that, let's add an audio effect. So let's choose, for example, a chorus. And as you can see, nothing has happened again. If I choose uh, uh, different buttons, they don't show any differences but you have these chorus effect which has been added let's add another one as well an auto filter okay let's add another audio effect like an auto wah. and now you can see this view has changed and you can see only the effects so if i go press on this first button you see the levels and the standard controls if i press the second one it goes to the effect and if i go to the next one it goes to the send effects or track so you can see how now it properly works against uh, um, the number of effects you have and indeed if you click and hold on an effect delete it there you go now it goes back it looks like these icons are not working but it's because everything is already visible okay i'm going to stop here hopefully um this was good as an introduction to zenbit uh, uh, free and I will show you more additional features in the next tutorial. Thank you very much. Bye.